All right, welcome back. Session 35. Clank, being the one who uh, managed to open through some insanity stuff, uh, managed to open the big chest. They find a book called Elders. And a lot of bags with the Koraki family crest upon them. Okay. So the breakdown is a lot of different kinds of Draka. But this is more money. I'll 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 give you the actual breakdown, but I have it written down as well. Uh this is more money than you've ever seen anywhere. Uh, other than, you know, well, actually, no, because it was cleaned out, or largely cleaned out, before you got to the vault in our Christmas episode. The Die Hard episode. <laughs> uh, but it is a shit ton of money. Specifically, you guys ready? Ready. Ready. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the lowest denominator of coin and work our way up. There's 350 black draka. Those are sort of your copper pieces, uh, equaling three, and that's a total of essentially three and a half white draka. Um, you said, okay, 300, 350 black draka, which is basically what? 3.5 white draka. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you find five, like, in, and this will take some time to count out, really. Right. But you have some time. Um, does Clank let anyone else count it? Because of his paranoia? It's... Oh, of course <laughs> not. Of <laughs> course not. There? You don't really have a gender. We'll just call you they, I guess. You're a robot. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm a human. All right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, okay. Gotcha. Am I a robot? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Who am I? Uh, a paranoid android. Uh, and this this will probably be done on the ground. Because, I mean, you're not really at any sort of risk at this point. Uh, at least not immediately. It would take time for any other cultisty types to show back up. Even if they know about what went down. So you spend a couple hours counting all this up. Uh, so you have the 350 black. There's 500 red Draka. Which comes out to 50 white. As far as its breakdown. Um, there is 1250 white Draka. Which comes out as normal. That's a, just a straight over to 1250. You find another 700 green Draka, which is 70,000 white Draka. And <laughs> this is like, it's a couple of bags, it's like two bags. When you open them, it's like without realizing it like your hands are shaking when you take this out to start counting it oh but it's blue draka oh and there are you find 72 blue draka insane which comes wow. out uh and by the way all this is updated on the contract uh so your current total 
recovered money, Karaki money, is seven million two hundred eighty-one thousand three hundred and three point five white draka. Woo! Which is just stupid money. Uh, so that means that your current payout is seventy-two thousand eight hundred and fourteen white draka. That's nice. Should you just bring it's all what you right. have there? Uh, it is unclear. It's unclear if this was all of the remainder, or if they had more Karaki money stashed elsewhere. But this is certainly enough that you could go fulfill the contract and get the payout, and that would be fine. Um, How about they we would... retire? <laughs> Game over. Let's get out of here. <laughs> uh, we don't that... tell any of the party members we leave. <laughs> that is an option. Uh, not a particularly intelligent one. But it is an option, for sure. <clears throat> but you have, in your possession now, more money than you could hope to spend in a long time. This is really bad to have with a paranoid robot. Or yeah. a human. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, this is, this is yeah. awful. Oh, God. Yeah, so... This sort of, like amplifies your paranoia that people are after you now because you have just shit tons of money on the ship um, we'll say that you kind of move it all over uh, to the ship takes a little bit of time really just because you know you can't like the, the chest doesn't shrink down or anything uh, it would if it were placed on the ship but you have to get it up to the ship first uh, and it takes some doing, but you do manage to get everything up there. <coughs> we already got the uh, enemies killed. We can just bring the ship to the money. Yes. Oh, that's very true. I mean, the ship, uh, I believe, is in Clank. He, he, because it shrank down and he put it in his little secret compartment, if I recall correctly. Uh, so, Clank has it right now. I don't, yeah, Clank has it. Would, would Clank's paranoia prevent him from... Maybe, from, yeah. From, from, like, what do you... Well, I mean, if he believes his, if he believes his human, he's not going to reach into his chest. To yeah, I'm not going to reach into my oh, chest. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, how does that play out? We carry it, I guess. Like... <laughs> uh, well, so the chest, the first chest that we had, I guess this, all this cannot fit in that chest, huh? The little, the chest that has the vials? Yeah. No, 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 no. No. The... The big chest is that big because it was needed to be that big to carry all the coins. Uh, yeah. And Draka doesn't weigh a huge amount. So, like, in, in D&D, the coin of the realm weighs a pound every 50 coins, right? It doesn't weigh that much. Because... Uh, that is a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, these are enchanted to weigh less so people can carry more because, you know, yay capitalism and stuff. Yay. <clears throat> so it's not a matter, it's not an issue of the weight. It's more of an issue of the volume. So, I mean, you can take the vials out and you can fit some in there, but it wouldn't be 
you couldn't fit all of it. You couldn't even fit all of just the white cockpit in it, really. So. <clears throat> Damn. Uh, do you have... Okay. Here's, here's kind of where we stand now, right? You have recovered the money. Plank, number one, believes in himself to be human, which I think is very funny. I like that a lot. Uh, yeah. And is hyper paranoid. What's interesting, though, and I guess you, however you want to rationalize it is up to you, but... Like, believing yourself to be human doesn't change the knowledge that you have the ship. Right. I just... Like, in now, your chest. You're just right. like, no, I can't, I can't open my chest. I'll die because I'm human. <laughs> <laughs> like, not anymore. That's old Clank. This is new Clank. So, uh, that's very funny. So, uh, the only real other option, if, I mean, unless... Uh, somebody else wants to sort of forcefully get the ship from you. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, would be to just start walking out of the forest back to the city uh, with, with the chest. Well, I mean, we could just make camp for three days. Well, I mean, we don't have any idea how long it'll last. Like. That's true. That's so, true. So, you, um, yeah, you don't know how long I, this, this paranoia is going to last. Uh, I would is, say that what we would probably... Tr I don't know because it's I guess, not a human, so we uh, would... does anyone have any type of because it's a curse, right? Is that it is? Oh, that's a that's an interesting point. Um, it is considered madness. Uh, it's not a curse per se, um, but like there I guess are thinking, ways to uh, cure it. So uh, well, and Krishna would know this, right? Um, as, oh. as technically would Corvus, but he's not there. Uh, so, Krishna, you would know that madness of this kind, and you kind of recognize it to be, like, it's hmm. not something that just whimsically happens, right? Uh, so right. it's clearly something that happened to him when he touched the lock. And madness can be removed or healed with greater restoration. Ah, uh, all I have access to is Lester, so we'll have to take him to a city. Yeah, you'll have to. So that's what we do. We start making our way towards a city where I know that they would have that. Yeah. Now the chest itself. So you can. Um, one of you has the bag of holding. I don't remember which one. Um, uh, it, I do. It's Clank. Okay. Uh, so, I do. Uh, so <laughs> the coin. You can put in the bag of holding, the yeah. Holding, <laughs> which uh, is in me. <laughs> so which is, it's in you. I thought it was on. It's not. It's, oh, it's on my side. It's, yes, yeah. because it was. Oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like that's not something that's in you. You can get uh, an arms piece that is that is a sort of extra extra dimensional space, uh, but I don't think you have that right this moment. But. Uh, you are able to put the coin into the bag of holding, which is completely fine and safe and all that stuff. And then just leave the big ass chest. Because otherwise you, yeah. you, you'll have to like two man just tote the chest around. It's a very nice chest and it's unbreakable and all that fun stuff. It has a nice lock on it, but it's a bit of a terrifying lock. Um, and you know, yeah. Clank, uh, you know instinctively, because you've you've handled the lock, that once you're proven worthy, you can open the lock at any time. Anybody else that touches it that isn't proven worthy would have to go oh, yeah. the same trials that you did. Yeah, I, I do. I, I'm enough. I have enough sense to warn them about what happened. Uh, and right, that that God is everywhere or something. I'm like he he is everywhere and mm -hmm. will be everywhere. Yeah, uh, and and that 
that's part of the paranoia too. It's like he's watching, or it's it's watching, you know. Yeah. Uh, and traveling with you in this state is proving difficult. Um, not because you're necessarily slow or anything like that, but you're so paranoid that. Uh, you like kind of force the group to stop every so often and look around like, make sure nobody's following us uh, and travel is becoming annoyingly slow uh, not to you because your paranoia is such that you don't understand it to be a bad you're just Considered as extra vigilance, you know. But the others are starting to get annoyed. Uh. No, I don't even notice. I might even yeah. think they're in on it now. <coughs> okay. <laughs> How does that manifest? Um. Now I'm gonna do the uh, the fry glare, and I'm gonna like slowly glare at them. I'm just like. Hmm. <laughs> Especially, uh, Bob. Shit. What's what's Bob Bob's name on here? Quetzal. Quetzal. Especially Quetzal. I definitely think Quetzal's out to get me. <laughs> yeah. Or out to get the money and take I it away you. from us. I got you. Um. So every time. Quetzal gets close to you, even if he's not really in intending to walk that close. You like pull your bag away and uh, a sort of very distrustful. I know it. <clears throat> it takes you a long time to get out of the forest. Um, out outside of the ship, you are. day a, normally a day in into the forest right so and this is like walking to the shortest path out of the forest to start heading away to Salt Lake City <laughs> but sure. with with uh, Clank's madness uh, it's twice that so two days later you find yourself finally outside of the forest. Um, you don't really, you, you know, it's, again, everything's bigger in this forest. Uh, you see a couple of gigantic squirrels. Lost uh, shadows. <laughs> you know, uh, eight foot tall deer. Like, nothing, nothing that's aggressive to you. But <coughs> certainly a lot of big creatures that are a little bit scary if you're hyper paranoid. Because they're much bigger than they should be. Uh, is, is Clank... Okay, here's a fun question. Uh, is in, in Clank's paranoid state, is he just staying his normal size? Is he shrinking down to be able to hide better? Or is he getting bigger to scare Um... <clears throat> Ooh. Uh, now while everyone's watching, I I, uh, I know I have that ability, and I still consider myself human. But oh right, I yeah I, I'm still human, but I just think I'm oh, yeah, that type yeah, of yeah. human. You're just a, <laughs> just a three, I was like a weird ass human. Just a three foot tall human. <laughs> it's like actually when I shrink, I think I'm a dwarf, and then when I'm really tall, yeah. I'm a giant. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I just, I just have three races. Um, that's funny, oh, but I at least don't change while they're viewing. Uh, I'll I'll let you know if that okay. changes. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Uh, now, because the paranoia is only for four days. Uh... Oh, <clears throat> goodness! What was that? Uh. Let the chap in for a moment. Oh. Gotcha. It's Clank's alarm system. 
<laughs> Beep. Beep. <laughs> oh, because this is only four four days. Four days in like four hours. As as you're walking to uh, towards Arctic City. The, the madness begins to fade, essentially. And by the time you get about halfway from the forest to the city, it has essentially waned. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, so, like, it's unfortunate just timing wise, and because no, because you had the ship, that it didn't really hit on any big. RP moments at, at that time. Um, there may be some lingering paranoia, but it's not. It it, it sort of subsides to a more <clears throat> a more reasonable level. <laughs> like you're still a little bit paranoid, but you know, like you don't think you're human anymore, uh, or dwarf or giant or whatever, uh, and you can. Whoa. You can more readily pull the ship out and stuff like that. Uh, you would still, and I would imagine. There's no. Is there any kind of like effect, like long term at all? No. Well, that well that was long term because it was for days. Days. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. I'm just making sure there's not like a scar. Like right. I don't know. No. I don't want to be snapped and then right. Start pissing myself <laughs> you don't have you did not get a permanent madness so because you managed to make the saving throw and uh like it, essentially if you had failed the saving throw by 10 or more so like if you had rolled a total of 10 or less right yeah then you would have had a permanent madness Oh but God! All right. Because it is, and basically all like what that does typically is it creates a new flaw for your character. So like, you know, maybe not the paranoia thing, but you know, I I think whatever you know, I don't trust any non artifice people or whatever there's a lot of different routes that that can go but thankfully in your case the <laughs> extreme paranoia, I did not yeah the, luckily yeah luckily uh, the extreme paranoia was not permanent and it does fade um, probably around the time where your party members are like getting ready to stab you for being annoying and too paranoid. Uh, but now you're just a normal amount of paranoid for someone who's carrying mm, shit tons of money. Just like you know, it's kind of like how uh, paranoid lottery winners get. You know? Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Stupid amounts of money. Because it's like, oh no. Someone's going to stab me trying to get my money. <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. So, like, that's a very legitimate uh, paranoia, by the way. <laughs> like, yeah. 100%. I believe 100 it. Legitimate paranoia. Especially, I mean, you have over. You guys are currently millionaires. As a group, uh, it's temporary, of course, because that money's going to back to the vault. But you guys have more money than you could really do anything with. Probably buy a couple of towns with that money. Not big ones, but small ones, anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> but you get to the edge of Sartak City. Or, no, I'm sorry. 
uh, you get to a couple of days out from Sartank City, and your paranoia fades to the normal level, and you're like, wait, I'm not, I'm not a, a fleshy, I'm not a fleshy being. What was I thinking? And you're sort of free to uh, do as you will now. Oh shit, I forgot to <clears throat> check the Dark Knight's gear. She's dead dead now, though. We can't revivify her at all at this point, right? Well, uh, <clears throat> it has been too long for revivify. Yeah, that's what I figured. Her soul is left this. You can, if you can find someone to do it, you can resurrect her. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> you have to find a powerful enough cleric to cast that spell. That's the um, agenda now. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Especially now that we have the ship, we can just um, either recover her body and put it on the ship or take the cleric to her. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you were wanting to... So, as far as right now, you basically left the bodies at the hinge of the ancient right right you walked south for 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 four days and some change before his paranoia wore off and he actually get the ship back uh to travel back to the hinge would be with the ship i would say another day maybe nice. no not even that probably like 10 hours 12 hours so uh, you can absolutely blast back over there if you wanted to recover her corpse or any other materials that you want to put on the ship uh, the we'll say of course that you took all the money and the briefcase the vials but I mean, there wasn't really anything else of, of value other than that. Uh, do you head back? Hell yeah, we do. Yep. Okay. So you head on back to the familiar clearing, and you find uh, Amiris and Harriet are busy uh, disposing, so to speak, of the bodies. <clears throat> so they haven't, like, you can tell by the time you get there that they only very recently found this occurrence uh, or at, at least went to check in and kind of scope things out and they found all the corpses. Um, they've been kind of digging holes and burying cultists who have been killed by you guys, essentially. And the, uh, you see that they've cleaned, they've cleaned like the blood off the faces and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very, uh, it's very respectful and like return to nature kind of thing. Uh, the Black Knight is not buried yet and is uh, in uh, what is the word I'm looking for here? Sort of in a reposed form uh, setting. up on the stone dais, ready to be buried, but has not been buried yet. So you kind of looked out there. You arrive. Harriet is a little bit taller than last time. Maybe 16 feet tall now instead of 15 feet. 
kind of steadily growing as as she consumes the the food of the of that forest and <coughs> they 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 greet you warmly of course uh, hey uh how's how's i guess everyone's okay uh i guess at this point i'm i'm fine so yeah i'm like yeah great <laughs> like a few hours ago no oh yeah. god no but yeah i'm fine now well we uh we were just roaming about this area and and came back to check on the hinge and see if the cult of manus was still around uh, and found all these corpses i presume it was from you was your work given the <coughs> um, evidence of hot pockets and you know telltale signs that it was your your combat style <coughs> um, and she says the black man over there looks so familiar uh, but I, I don't <coughs> having some trouble placing him like I, I don't remember I don't know why she looks so familiar to me that's Finn's sister yeah therefore gonna... we have to try to revive her her eyes kind of go wide uh, <clears throat> she's like, what and you guys you all you all killed her Right? We had no idea. <laughs> That's true. We had no idea. Mm. Yep. Well, I don't know. I know that some druids can reincarnate. Uh, she would come back as a different race altogether. <clears throat> Uh, I don't know. I don't know of any around here that could do it, but I know that some of the more powerful druids can, and of course, uh, clerics. Uh, any s powerful clerics can resurrect the dead if there's sufficient uh, sufficient funding for that. I think that would be the better route. I think that they would feel quite disrespected if we brought her back as something else. Right. <clears throat> that makes sense to me. Well, we were actually about to bury her, so it's good you came when you did. Indeed. Uh, you can tell that decomposition is starting, but it, it hasn't like 100% set in just yet. Uh, there's a faint smell, but it's not, it's not real bad just yet. Harriet is, of course, more than willing to help you get her up onto the ship. Um, it would be even easier, of course, if you remove the armor first. Uh, what, what are your plans there? I think what, Gerald? I think I think that you, Tommy. Do you still hear the the breaking the, glass? Yeah. It's. I think we should maybe tack down what that is if we can because I'm missing like a lot of dialogue. <clears throat> For me. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, is this better at all? Yeah, that's way better. Okay. Yeah. I think what's happening is that it's it's really just cutting out. So I think, are you wearing a headset or using that boom mic? I'm just I'm I'm using the mic. I can get close That's to probably, the mic. Yeah, uh, that yeah. is might be it. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm fine with that. Awesome. Um, good, good, good. So, do you want? Uh, so it would be easier to move her free of armor um but 
how how you approach that's up to you. That really doesn't matter to me. Uh, uh, I don't think there are too many ways of going about that. I think we're just gonna have to take that on and off. Okay. Uh, as you begin to gently strip the full plate armor, um, she's wearing your sort of standard padding underneath the armor. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> it is naturally at this point blood soaked. And uh, to help with the process, uh, they, uh, with, with your help if you want to, um, Harriet is more than willing to sort of clean her corpse so that it's a little bit more presentable when you find someone that can do it. Uh, yeah, sure. So you also strip away the padding and <clears throat> her body is covered in scars. <laughs> what was that? That's crazy. Uh, noise. Sorry. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's covered in scars. Like, you've seen. Finn, of course, Finn doesn't wear a lot of clothes to begin with, uh, and he has, uh, he has scarring a lot as well, but it's not nearly to this level. Um, it's almost to a point in places where you do not see exposed skin, like it's all scar tissue. Wow. Uh, she... Uh, without any sort of required check on this, you can immediately tell that she had been tortured for yeah. some time. Oh, let me turn this down. That's picking up. Ah, come on, stupid thing. Turn the gain down a little bit. Okay. Maybe that'll help. <clears throat> Um, so before she, and again, this is just kind of deduction, really, uh, there is clear evidence that before she was somehow converted to the cult of madness cause, she was extensively tortured. Ooh. Uh, to the point of, of breaking her down. Uh, <clears throat> which for a barbarian and someone who deals with that kind of pain all the time it's gonna take a lot. Takes a lot. And that is definitely what you see. Uh, you get the body cleaned up. You have at this point, five and a half days or so before resurrection will no longer work. Yeah. So just to break that down for you, Revivify is within the first minute of death. Wow. Resurrection is within the first 10 days and then true resurrection is like 200 years. <laughs> wow. And with true resurrection, you don't even need a body. You can just like, because that's a ninth level spell, right? Like you, yeah. you cast a spell. You just have to say, you, you just have to know the person's name. You cast a spell, you say the person's name. And if they died in an unnatural way and they're willing to come back, the magic creates them a body. That's wild. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> it's crazy. That's yeah. actually that's what uh, that's what happened at 
kind of toward the end of campaign one when they resurrected uh, Sai's parents. Because huh. they were killed by a dragon. And uh, it had been some time. So, yeah. I would resurrect that dragon just to beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They could have, too, because they were all level 20 at that point, I think. Anyway. Uh, so, you get her. Um, there. It's pretty standard armor. Like it's it's light it's like plus one, full plate. It happens to be black. Right um, it's not adamantine. No. Uh, but it is. <laughs> Damn. It's. I mean, it's a nice piece of armor. It's a nice set of armor. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, the sword that she used, the like energy sword that she used, is just busted. It's broken whatever power because yeah. it, it it was manifested from the ring she wore and the gem in it will, is oh, is right. shattered so yeah. whatever it was uh, is not anymore hmm. so uh, you don't really find too much more of of note on her and because times of the essence will sort of fast forward a little bit. Uh, you get another day, two days that puts us at five, six, seven days in to her death. Um, she is starting to smell a bit. And, uh, you reach Sartek City. Now, if, hey. anywhere, if anywhere, realistically, Sartek City will be the place to find someone capable of casting the spell. And in fact, that's not a huge issue, really, as far as finding someone. The problem is you need... Uh, I think it's um, a diamond worth. F is it five hundred? White Draca. Yeah, that, that, that sounds right. Um, let's take that out of the party funds. Oh no. Okay, spell that right, please. Resurrect. Give me that spell. <clears throat> Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it is Oh, that's more than that's 100 years. Okay. Resurrection is 100 years, 7th level. Let me let me see. Maybe re revivify is more than a minute. Maybe that's the 10-day one. Okay. <clears throat> No, that's the last minute. Oh, it's raised dead. That's what I'm thinking of. Sorry. Oh, there's like so many different resurrection spells. <clears throat> okay, yeah, this is raised dead. Raised dead returns a creature, a dead creature you touch to life, provided it's been dead no longer than 10 days. If the nice. creature's soul is both willing and at liberty to rejoin the body, the creature returns to life with one hit point. Uh, it neutralizes poison and cures non magical diseases that affect the creature. It does not, however, remove magical diseases, curses, or similar effects if these aren't first removed prior to casting the spell. They take effect when the creature returns to life. This spell cannot return an undead creature to life. Okay. It also closes all mortal wounds, but does not restore body parts. So, 
uh, this is a clever little note in there. If the creature is lacking body parts or organs in, in, uh, in, integral for its survival, its head, for instance, the spell automatically fails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so... <clears throat> not... Uh, she has not been beheaded or anything like that. She does have some degree of organ damage, but they're not missing. They're just damaged. Right. So that's good, at least. <clears throat> uh, coming back from the dead is an ordeal. The target takes a minus four penalty to all attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. Uh, every time the target finishes a long rest, the penalty is reduced by one until it disappears. So it, takes, it basically takes four long rests to recover from being revised yeah. uh, revived in this way okay so you need a diamond worth at least 500 gold pieces which the spell consumes it's a f it gets, uh, it's fifth level spell uh, can you cast fifth level spells yet that's not no I can cast only up to three okay that's oh, right third level at eight. Okay. So you would know that Raise Dead is capable to be cast by clerics, paladins, of course, or bards. Bards can do it too, apparently. Takes an hour to cast, and there's a range touch, of course. So now that we have that established. You have, so Sartek City is huge. This is just such a big place. Um, and so you have three different routes you can take here. You can try to find a cleric, you can try to find a paladin, or a bard. There's a bard college in Sartek City. There are oodles and oodles of cleric places, churches and the like as there are in any big city in fact some are on like one street <laughs> right uh, which is fairly common as well uh, well I can rub elbows with either the uh, cleric or the paladin that's oh. true you wouldn't know because you haven't spent much time yourself in Sartex City Right. So you wouldn't know any anyone here of that variety. But you can find someone. Right. We'll do that then. Just whoever is the closest, whoever is available. All right. First of all, let's get a... Oh, goodness. That's our crazy dog running down the hallway. <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh, uh, oh goodness. During, during this time, is anyone going to look at the book? Hell no. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, well, I'll, before I do, I'll, I'll cast, um, detect evil. Okay. Uh, the book itself is not... Like, you're not picking up any evil vibes from the book. I'm going to check it out then. Okay. So, uh, like with any magic item, because it is a magical item, uh, the, more you, the more time you kind of spend with it, the more you can figure out what it does, right? So... Nice. It is a very rare book, actually. You wouldn't know that it's very rare. You just know that it has power. Right. Um, this book contains within it... When you just kind of flip through it, it has a lot of information about... Uh, sort of very basic information about the kind of patrons that warlocks can get. Like, it doesn't specify 
you know, this one's name is this and blah, blah, blah. But it talks about like, well, you have celestials and they're, they can do this for you. And there's, you know, it sort of gives you some generic information about the kind of patrons that warlocks can get. Hmm. It does require attunement. This book does. Uh, if you are a warlock, you can cast your warlock spells a total of three times rather than the typical two, which is kind of a big thing. And hmm. if you're not a warlock and you're attuned to it, you gain the ability to use Eldritch Blast, like as mm. as the cantrip. But every time you use it, you have to make a DC 16 Wisdom saving throw, or suffer from a short term madness. Well, that's fucking worthless. <laughs> <laughs> I may cut that DC down a little bit, because retrospectively it seems a little high. But that's pretty brutal. It, uh, you, you know. You can kind of blast. <clears throat> blast that Eldritch Blast. Blast. If it, if it were like a DC 10 or something, you got like a 50 50 shot, then. I'm going to actually. I'm going to probably cut that down to uh, 12, probably. And we'll see how that does. I don't want it too yeah. low. Um, but it, yeah, you're right. 16 is a little high for every time you use it for it to make you go crazy for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we'll cut that down to 12, and so that should be a little bit better. Should be a bit better. Yeah. Okay. So the biggest obstacle you have right this moment, unless you happen to have one, is finding a diamond worth 500 White Draka. I look slightly left and pull out the diamond. <laughs> Do you have one? Uh, yes, it's in my back pocket. Oh, we damned. Oh, yeah. I remember you guys buying those. Oh, I do too. Some yeah. of you bought some. I don't think everybody bought one. Uh, but right. that is... Okay, fair enough. It's handy. Yeah. Whoever uh, uses it, we could re replace that, you know, just like at the earliest convenience. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So you have one. Okay, great. Um, where are you going to find the person who can cast this? Uh, that I can't help out with. <laughs> right. I guess there would be a church a, or something. A gem maker or something. Maybe someone who makes jewelry or something. Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, you have... Uh, if you have the diamond already, that's right. fine. That's 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 the part you need. The piece you need. The, the uh, material component. But now you need the person who can cast it. Yeah. So... We'll you have... Check down a cleric. Okay. Check down a cleric. Um, which... Because there's, in a city of this size, there's going to be uh, churches and, and temples and stuff to basically all the gods, just about. So, right. uh, Does it make a difference which god we choose? Not necessarily. Uh, there are some who would be less inclined to help you like for example uh, the temple of Chaldea the goddess of death would probably not be all that interested in helping you bring someone back from death right uh, but you know do we know like um who the barbarians worship who would favor her yes uh, you you would because you Excellent. follow the same deity 
um, which is to say Samusan, the god of battle. Excellent. So that would be probably your best bet we'll in, in so far as that, because you have some degree of pull already there, because you're a paladin of 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 Samusan. So the the temple is let me make a few notes here actually. Wait. Okay, let's go all the way down here. I did not expect you guys to do that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> what is it? I did. I did not expect you guys to want to resurrect Frigg. Uh, uh, it makes sense, I guess, now. But I, I just didn't consider that route. So cool. Good on you. Throwing me curveballs. Um, it is. Uh, the temple actually resembles a small. Uh, scoot closer your mic. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Is this better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the temple resembles a small coliseum. It's nice. not. It's not. Uh, it's obviously not a full size coliseum. That's in a different district of Sartak City. They have one. But it's, you know, this is just a sort of, it's like a mini replica, so to speak, of, of a Colosseum. And, uh, hang on. Colosseum. There we go. Okay. When you walk in, these worshippers of Samusan don't wear the sort of conventional cleric type robes or anything like that. Um, they have loose fitting pants uh, with a sort of cloth belt. Um, many of them don't wear any upper garment and that is uh, largely because a lot of their the way that Samusan is worshipped in a lot of instances is through combat wrestling sort of fighting in general and Wearing heavy robes kind of gets in the way of that. Yeah. So they wear kind of loose fitting pants. Not many of them are wearing any shoes either. Um, it's very much the sort of style of pants that are like kind of tight around the ankles and then kind of poof out. Uh, sort of like uh, <laughs> for lack of a better reference um, like Jasmine's pants from Aladdin yeah you know how they kind of they're tight around the ankles and they have they're very loose around the legs and then there's a sort of right. cloth bit around the waist to keep it all together so sitting in, so there's like columns throughout the sort of inner the inner inner front part the foyer if you will has a lot of columns and stuff you see a few people are striking some of these columns the columns have been reinforced so well, it's like practice like a punching bag kind of thing 
they tend to ignore you. A few of them acknowledge your presence and give you a nod as you kind of walk through. And one one of them actually stops practicing, stops, you know, training. And it's a it's a human. Reasonably big human. Very uh, just like everybody else here in this temple. Muscular. Like defined swole. Swole. You could say swole. Yeah. And he kind of eyes you all up and down because it's a very eclectic group. Because you have a kind of scrawny human, which is Cain. You have the great big dragonborn, the robot who take who normally is only three ish three and a half feet tall and of course quetzal <laughs> uh, quetzal gets a lot of interesting looks because he's a chef bird person but there's some acknowledgement as though they know that he has gone down the martial path Maybe it's the increased, uh, his own increased musculature or what have you. Um, but there is a sort of acknowledgement there. And he says, uh, Oh, how are you, like, are, are, are you just, it's Krishna carrying the body into this place? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Like, are you doing like a fireman's carry or... What's your, um, just like in front, arms at 90 degrees kind of a thing? Yeah. Okay. I would say that with your strength and the fact that she's not wearing her full plate, that that's, uh, that's absolutely feasible. He, uh, he sees you carrying the body. And he says, Resurrection? We guessed it. Mm. And he kind of points deeper in. <sighs> First pit. He's like you, Dragonborn. We're finding What is he it. saying? Huh? I'm sorry. What is he saying? He's he's saying. I don't know why my mic's being rude. <laughs> sorry. Uh, he says that the person you're looking for is a Dragonborn like you. Oh, nice. And you'll find him a little further in, in the, uh, in the pit. Ah. Yes, yes. I appreciate that information. He gives you a nod and then returns to what he was doing before. Right. Which was uh, this? This guy was he wasn't like hitting anything. He was picking up uh, big stones, sort of like you know, uh, the 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 Muscle Man competition, where you like pick up the big stone and put it up on the pedestal. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of doing that with a series of those. Mm. And he uh, just gets back to it. Hmm? Like a meditation or a ritual? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Exercise and 
combat training are are very common uh, modes, if you will, of worshiping Samusan. Right, to the pit. Huh? To the pit, to the yes. Pit. Yes, yes, yes. You, you continue walking through, uh, and you see, you start to see fewer and fewer members of the temple. Um, you see maybe one or two people dressed differently um, that maybe were there for some other reason than training at the temple. Uh, maybe they were just looking into it or touristy kind of it happens, you know. Uh, <clears throat> not t touristy in the sense of like, Oh, let's take pictures of this neat place. It's more like <laughs> they're they're looking into, you know, do we want to go here? Do we want to try a different temple? That kind of thing. Right. And they kind of make their way through. And you reach a sort of, the columns open up. And you enter into a wider sort of centralized space. And... There are a few, a few individuals standing around the, uh, standing around this this area. This kind of sort of, uh, well, it's called the pit. So it is definitely a pit. The pit's about forty feet in diameter, and in the very center of this is a dragonborn and this dragonborn is is actually gold like you excellent uh which works in your favor i may right. at at any rate do so um and he's fighting what's crazy as you're watching this as you kind of approach this this point is he's fighting like six people wow and he's blindfolded oh wow it's a bad dude and he is doing well <laughs> right. several people several from one side attack him at once and he, you know, dodges out of the way. Uh, they try to flank him a couple of times, and he uses their weapons against them, essentially. Uh, and one by one, he takes them all down. Uh, he has a f he has a few scars, from what you can see, just from his many years as a fighter uh, as a combatant but it is uh, most of them are very very faint as as if you know he's he's been healing himself you know, right the whole time like you can do yeah, yeah. Uh, and wait give me just one second jump into that very fun conversation I need to get this up here there we go oh there's your crazy news okay oh Let's do that. Is the uh, what would be the high ranking official of the Samusan grouping? Battle. Uh, okay. 
just call him the Battle Master for now. I may come up with a different title for him later. <coughs> but I have his name at least. Okay. He finishes knocking all the, all of them down. And he he stands more relaxed at that point. He removes his blindfold. And a lot of the people around the ring, around the pit, uh, begin clapping. Because it was an impressive show. Uh, he is facing your direction. And he notices all of you standing at the edge of the pit. Uh, he... Before he says anything to you, of course, he first moves over to all of the individuals around him, kind of pulls them up to their feet, you know, dusts them off, gives them some tips for the next time, sort of, you know, gives them a little bit of some training notes, like, okay, you, need, you need to work on this, you need to go... Uh, build your strength or core or whatever you need to go um, practice this particular sword strike you know I noticed when I was fighting you that you swung your sword a little too far to the left when you were doing that move so practice that a different way <clears throat> and he, he was blindfolded <laughs> the whole time so he's a beast right and they all kind of scoop themselves up and he shoes them off. The people, the other people around the pit notice you at that point because they were so enraptured with the combat that they didn't notice you at first. But seeing that you were carrying a body, they all move away respectfully move away from the pit <clears throat> and the gold dragonborn motions uh, sort of beckons with his hand for you to enter it's only about an eight foot nine foot drop down you can just step off and land on your feet, and that's fine. Like, it's no problem at all. Superhero landing. <clears throat> there you go. go Three points. <laughs> <laughs> and you move forward, and he says, <clears throat> as, as you're approaching him, he's he kind of walks, walks towards you as well. He says, uh, My name is Armek. I am the battle master of the Temple of Samisan here. What uh what are your names? I'm Krishna. This is my companion Clank. I go for a high five. Uh well To him, Krishna. Oh, to Chris. No, it's it's a low it's a low five because you're three low. and a half feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's true. I like I jump up to do it, and he just like <laughs> bends his hand up slightly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So you you high five. Krishna. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, a small. A smile appears on his on his face. <clears throat> we'll say that Cain and Quetzal uh, stayed on the ship. So, or we, whatever they do at this point, we'll 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 talk about it with them the next time we play. Right. <clears throat> uh, just the two of you. He says, 
And who is she? This is our companion as well. Okay. Her name is... Her name. Her name is what? Ah. Um, her name is Finna. Finna. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're purposefully not telling her real name. Well, I forgot her real name, actually. Oh. It's Frigg. F-R-I-G-G. Frigg, Frig, that's right. That, that's it. This is Frigg. Okay. I mean, it's fine if you want to say it's Finna. <sighs> yeah, I don't, want to, I don't see any reason to hide her identity, though. Mm. That's fair. Uh, he says... It looks like she died honorably in battle. It's true. She fought a fierce battle. Is it your desire that she be interred here? It, that can I would like to, uh, happen. I'd like to bring her back to the world. Her, um, her fight is not over yet. Ah. Well... That is certainly something that we can do. Do you have the implement that we need? Yes, sir. Thanks. Excellent. All right, man. Yep. The preparations for this ritual will take some time. It is an hour long process. That said, we have time to discuss anything you may wish to know. Uh, I see that you, Krishna, follow the same path as I do. That's correct. Kind of looks you over a little bit and says, uh, although you have, there is something different about your power than my own. I've uh, branched out a little bit in order to serve our God better. Mm -hmm. Well, we all must walk our own path. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> is there because you, you do legitimately have an hour uh, while they do this so like essentially what happens is you hand uh, you hand Armek the diamond and he sort of beckons over a couple of other members of the temple who will with your permission of course um, take the body of Frigg and begin the preparations nice um, again that will take some time uh, he, he says uh Did you wish to train here? 
That's not a bad idea. You seem quite skilled. I am. Perhaps. Uh, you can learn a few things here. It wouldn't hurt to try. And. Your artifice, your friend here. Clank? Yes? Yes. I have not met many of your kind, but I've heard that you can become much stronger and bigger than you are now. Is this true? And... I enlarge and say, like, the whole way from small to medium to large, I go, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks up at you because you're, when you're in your big form, you're nine feet tall. Yeah. <sighs> you're a couple feet taller than him. He's tall, but he's not nine feet tall. Yeah. He nods, impressed. I imagine that may uh, that, that that comes in handy, tactically, in battle. Yes. I've landed on a few people. Mm -hmm. Here and there, you've landed on a few people. It's very funny. <laughs> <clears throat> and he, and it's it's like a little awkward, but he does he smiles and he just says that's funny. He doesn't actually laugh, he just says that's funny. That you've <laughs> like landed on a few people. Oh. Yeah. He is it was Hilarious. <laughs> I was trying to think of a pun, I can't think of one. <laughs> I was going to say smashing, but it right. makes sense. How would you like... He kind of turns his attention back to Krishna. What would you like to learn? Um. Is there anything in particular... That we can teach you at any rate. Have you learned any ways to use your breath weapon in battle differently than standard? Mm. That is a great that's a great question. Ooh, I like if my that. headset dies, I'll I'll have to talk to my Oculus. Okay. Just saying it's sitting there yelling at me. Gotcha. Um, we're actually pretty close to being able to end this here. Right. Uh, and that's actually a great, like, he says to you, through, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you, you go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, he says, through many years of practice, there are different ways that I have learned that my breath weapon can be used. Yes. Nice. Um, and I can teach you some of the basic sort of forms of that. Uh, but nice. it will take time for you to master them. That's, uh, yeah, I would expect. Uh, I would expect that it's well worth that time, though. Well, good. How much time do you have to train? Um, what were we doing at the time that we went out there? I don't think we were doing anything that was really time pressing. No, uh, and in fact, at this point, 
with two, it's been seven-ish, eight days, maybe, at this right. point. You had you had to find the temple and all that stuff, um, which isn't super easy in a big city you're unfamiliar with. But you find it, of course. Obviously, you're there, so um, right. you have. Oh, that works out really well, actually. The next day is when your armor is done. Oh, nice. By, by that guy. So, like, it's been an in-game month. Or nice. whatever that was. A couple, it was a couple weeks. Maybe, it might have been a full month. I don't remember. But it's coming up. Uh, yeah. Well, let's finish this process first. And then, if you can stay for some time then we can absolutely teach you I, I have no problems teaching you that I know that you will use them well and in service to the lord of battle that's true I look forward to it. he'll definitely see battle <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> This is very well. Uh, I have a few things of my own to prepare for this ritual. And then once it's done, perhaps we can begin. Excellent. And that is where I think that's a good place to end it, I think. Yeah. So we have. It's going to be two weeks. Two I'm, weeks? Yeah. I'm out of town next weekend anyway, so even if it wasn't, oh, okay. we wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, so two weeks from now, we're good. I don't I don't see... I don't think we have any... We don't have anything coming up. Uh, two weeks? No. Unless my schedule changes randomly at work. That's a high possibility. <laughs> that you'll be out because of work. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, if I do get the position, it's going to happen quick. It's going to be, like, uh, within the next right. month, I right, think. Right, right. okay. Well, we'll play that by ear. All right. Uh, if, well, we'll see. Yeah, it, it really comes down to the schedule. So as, as soon as I know, I promised. Like, the first thing I thought about when I got the promotion was like, man, I really hope this doesn't interfere with D&D. &D. Yeah. So. yeah, really. Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. So uh, hang on. Let me go ahead and... Laters. Laters.